John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Isheen EX5. This is the new budget launch by Isheen um, on their budget camera line, and this one is a very special combination, and we're going to talk about why for many people around the world, this should be your first drone. So first, let's start off with this is a very ultra lightweight and the elephant in the room is it does look very, very similar. Not exactly, but very similar to the famous, wonderful DJI Mavic Mini. Uh, so does this compare to that? In a lot of ways, it does. Let's talk about how it does. One, it folds up to very similarly size. Two, this is actually lighter coming in at only 229 grams. So if you're in one of those countries that has a 250 gram weight limit on drones, this one will keep you well underneath that threshold. Let's talk about five camera drone categories that we're gonna to talk to today. How easy is it to set up? How well does it fly? How good is the camera footage? How well does that footage actually look? And those are two different things. We're gonna talk about why. And then lastly, how good of a value is it? So first of all, how easy is it to set up? Well, the gold standard these days is that it comes with a set of instructions that will show you. It also comes with this really awesome hard case that fits up to three batteries. I mean, this is a great inclusion. A lot of times on those expensive drones, you have to buy that. It comes with a set of instructions that very clearly tell you how to calibrate it, how to get it going in the air and where to download the app. And the gold center is that you need a QR code. That's the easiest thing. Point your camera at it, it launches the app store. You download the app, no guessing to the app store. So check box for this guy there. Um, second, it has this little piece of cardboard on the controller when you open it up. That tells you very clearly what all the buttons on there do. And on the back, it has very specific detailed calibration instructions. Oh man, this is great. A lot of people miss that. They go to try to fly their drone and they're trying to dig through the instruction booklet. This is perfect. It's really concise. It's everything you need, you know, just to get everything turned on, get the app on, open it. You're going to want to open the top arms first, then the bottom arms. You set it on level ground whenever you turn it on. Then you do the calibration dance. Now, if you've done it correctly, you're going to spin it clockwise three times. Once the front of that drone has passed you three times, it should beep. Now, I'd really like that it gives you an audible beep to know that that part of the calibration is done. Then you face it vertically, turn it in the same direction with the nose pointing down three times. And if that succeeds, it'll beep a second time. Then you are ready to put it back on the ground and take off and fly. Uh, on the app, you'll also notice that you have a lot of your camera controls for recording resolutions. You can put it into high speed mode or low speed mode. I like that it has that option. Um, you can also do things on there like measure how many GPS satellites it has connection to. And if you do have connection to those satellites, you're gonna be able to hover in place. Now with these camera drones, if you're a beginner, um, you're gonna be able to take off, fly, don't fly around anything too closely the first few times you fly this. But if you ever do get in trouble, meaning if you ever get disoriented and you figure out, you forget which way you're pointing, just take your thumbs off of the sticks of the controller. It will stay in place. Then you can look at the camera screen, see where you are, figure out how to get back. So how to get up and flying, is super checkbox. This is one of the easiest on the market to get up in the air. Because when you buy one of these, you wanna learn how to fly. You don't wanna spend forever trying to just figure out how to get it to take off. Two, how well does it fly? This thing flies really well. It has a tremendous amount of power and speed for its size, but it's very controllable power. There was a time where I was just flying this going weaving in and out of some trees like as if i was on a race course i mean it's that fun to fly um, and the battery life says that you can get 30 minutes i'm guessing that's really such a long time in my world of drone racing we normally fly like two to five minutes at a time so this is a tremendous amount of time it's hard not to get bored before that but it does seem to last that long um, so that's great flight feel flight performance, and although this is sort of a plasticky radio, it's one of the higher quality ones I've seen in a while. 
you can really get some fine tune adjustments. And what I mean by that is if you push all the way forward, you're gonna start going fast or all the way to the side or all the way to the right. You're gonna go fast in either direction, which is fine once you get the hang of it. But you can also really apply just a tiny bit of pressure to go very smoothly and very slowly. So flight performance on this thing, you know, almost the highest marks you can get for a camera drone. It's exceptionally nimble, fun to fly. And when it has a GPS lock, it will completely hover in place. I actually took another drone out. I was by myself. I flew this up in the air about 50 feet and just let it stay there while I took the time to turn on another drone, put my goggles on and fly around it. get some unique footage. So you can actually see from the air just how locked in place this thing is. That is one of the things that these camera drones usually don't do too well. Usually they drift in about a 12 to 24 inch um, kind of a circle. They don't lock in. This one was like locked in. Flight performance and GPS lock were on par with DJI, which is like unheard of. Two, what kind of footage does this get? Well, the quality of the image is okay. It says 4K. 4K is for stills. That's like, that's a buzzword, don't believe it. This does 1080p recording. And if you're sitting there like I did, looking all over the thing, trying to figure out where the SD card slot is, it doesn't have one. It records your 1080p HD footage to your cell phone. So that may be a pro or a con for some people. It means you don't have to go out and buy an extra SD card to record on this, which is nice. And the footage will already be on there for your phone, so you don't have to move it over if you're somebody that likes to upload things directly from your phone. So that's how that works. Now, the second part of the camera um, equation is what does the footage look like? And that is the major downside of this drone. While this does have a fully functional rotating um, camera mount i don't want to call it a gimbal because a gimbal implies that it has stabilization on board now what that does is as the drone moves about even if it's going super smooth the wind is going to be moving it slightly right and if it has a gimbal that will absorb those motions and keep the camera perfectly totally steady and still and stabilized in three-dimensional space without that you'll see those slight um drifting of the drone in the air in fact you can't even necessarily see it as you're looking at it but when you look at the footage you'll be able to see that it moves around a bit so this camera can rotate fully down and this is one of the few drone cameras that i could see i actually left it in this position it can actually rotate about five or ten degrees upward now why would you want to do that this drone, like we talked about, does have a bit of speed. So if you're going full throttle, it's going to tilt a little bit like this. So being able to angle the camera slightly up means that you'll get a more flatter picture and less looking straight at the ground. So that is good. Um, last of all, value. This thing is like $110 to $120 uh, a lot of times on sale. Um, so that's just mind blowing how cheap this thing is. Um, so yes, it doesn't have stabilized footage, meaning that your footage isn't going to look perfect, but it's still pretty good. And if you wanted to buy a drone to dip your toe in the waters and don't want to just run out and spend a thousand bucks, um, now you can get this for so cheap. The range, the flight performance, the feel is really going to be comparable to that DJI. Now, the software features of DJI are always going to be better. And the price point, though, is also going to be four times more. So if you really wanted to get usable footage for like a vacation, the, the bottom line is you're going to have to spend $400 to get the DJI Mavic Mini. Or you could spend $220 for the Ishin EX4. That's the big brother to this one. That one actually does have a gimbal on board with stabilized footage and flies pretty good too. So those are the price points, guys. 120 ish bucks for this. I do recommend that you get the three battery combo. Speaking of batteries, I really, really like that this thing, the batteries have a USB connector directly on them and they have light indicators to indicate whether they're charging or full. So you don't need a special battery charger to cart around. If you have three of these, you can charge two of them on a battery bank that you take with you while you're flying. The third, you can fly almost forever. Really awesome. The radio is pretty high quality. It takes four AAA batteries. 
I like that it has this tray at the bottom. A lot of times they have the phone tray at the top. It's a little fiddly and then it kind of covers your antennas. This allows your antennas to remain clear, probably get a better connection to the drone. Phone goes underneath there and then you have your standard things. One thing that is a little bit different is the camera up and down buttons are on the front face of this. A lot of times they're on the shoulders. This one did it on the front and I actually didn't mind that too much. It was still pretty easy to manipulate. One thing that I don't like though is for some reason as you're pushing the camera up and down, it beeps like this. That's super annoying. I don't know why it does that. And it takes you about 15 or 20 of those beeps to get the camera going all the way up to all the way down. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's not really a huge gripe. So if you want to get a first drone, if you want to get a kid a drone, if you want to get something that's going to be easy to set up, easy to start flying, great to learn how to fly. If your end goal is to buy an expensive camera drone, but you want to start off with something cheaper first to learn how to fly so that you don't crash your thousand or two thousand dollar investment this is absolutely the training wheels that you can get yourself or if you just want an inexpensive way to get up in the air get a few pictures or somewhat shaky videos this is a great option not everybody needs um, fully stabilized footage if you do spend double or quadruple the price but if you don't you want to dip your toe in this is awesome great job i've been waiting for a camera drone that maybe didn't have every single feature to be actually good to fly easy to set up reliable to come out at this price point and it's finally here so this is my recommendation for your first drone if you are trying to figure out what to get and if you want those extra features to get that beautiful stabilized footage get the ishin ex4 i'll have a link to my video review on that or spend all the way quadruple and get the Mavic Mini. Thanks guys.